in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? So as we see, this is the beginning of what we know as creation, okay? So now the scripture is recording the, the creation of what we know as all existence, period, all right? So now, okay, let's read on. Verse 2, and the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. So it said, now it said, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the waters, right? So now this is when you see this is before anything was ever created, right? So, you know, before time, before, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, you know, any uh, dimensions were created. You know, like, it was just all darkness all across the board, all right? So now, there's one thing I wanted to get some understanding on real quick. And uh, when, he, when he goes back to the be, in the beginning, right, God created the heavens and the earth, right? So now we see the, of course, when we look at it, to us, that's singular, all right? When we look at it in context, it's showing you here, it just says God, right, which is just singular. Okay, but of course, according to the Hebrew, right? When you look in the original Hebrew text, it'll it'll uh, it'll show you that it says gods in plural, right? So the Hebrew word for um, gods in the plural is Elohim or Allah Hayyam, right? In ancient the ancient Hebrew, so it's showing you that there was more than one power that uh, actually participated in the creation of the heavens and the earth, right? So I always uh, mention this uh, uh, when I was in college, right? You know, my professor at the time, my history professor, you know, he had mentioned, like, he had mentioned, you know, if anybody can tell me right now, why does it say God in the original Hebrew text? I'll give you $500 right now, right? So knowing what I know now, I, I would have had me $500 in my pocket, man, because – that was his thing. He wanted to know. He wanted to know why. So he wanted somebody to break it down. So I'm pretty sure, man, his knowledge is increasing about this. You know, about this word. He even came up about five hundred dollars. But anyways, um, of course. So it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit uh, of God moved upon the surface of the water, meaning the elements. So. Um, when you're dealing with the word water, meaning my young, okay, the elements, um, like, uh, of course, all of the elements that you could think about, all right? Look at your periodic table, okay? Um, so, of course, Elohim, as I mentioned before, that is the, is the plural form of the word God that we're reading here in the English, all right, which means rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, so on and so forth, right? So there's uh, different meanings to this term God, all right? but it just simply means power or powers, okay? So now, uh, continue reading. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. So the Lord said, or the God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? So now you see that this is what the light um, in which we're reading about, this is what sparked these elements to create all of what we all of what we see today, right? All of them atoms and stuff like that, man, were ignited. And there you go, all right? You got your universe, multiverses. You have all of the, you know, the water. All of those things, man. You know, were now being uh, being created, right? But you know, of course, there's a, a deeper a deeper understanding to, of course, what we're reading, right? So um, um, as you go through your, your readings and stuff, man, you'll you'll figure out, man, who was there in the beginning, also creating. Um, and uh, as, as one of the chief architects of the creation of all existence itself, from time, from the elements, from the creation of the earth, the atmosphere, the water, the land, even from the tiniest molecules that you see, all right, bacteria, parasite, all of this was created, okay, and, um, and uh, uh, can 
instructed, you know, by our, that's what, our Messiah. And we're going to find out. All right. Um, Go ahead. Continue reading. Verse 4. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Mm Mm-hmm. The evening and the morning were the first day. Right. So now, so he's showing you that God saw the light, that it was good, and God uh, uh, God div- uh, divided the light from the darkness, all right? So the evening and the morning were the first day, right? So this is when time uh, came into uh, existence, shall we say, all right? This is when everything was now being created, Okay. So then you read on, you read the rest of uh, Genesis chapter 1, you see all of the other, you know, things in which the Most High began to create, all right, before he created the earth, literally, all right, the ground that we walk on, the sea, all of that, all right. So remember, this is just showing you that time was being created, uh, light was, was, um, was being created, all of that, okay. So now let's open up to the book of John now, John chapter 1, St. John chapter 1. And start at verse 1. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm -hmm. So now, as we read, right, we read and saw that in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, right, He said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? So now, as we read here in John, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? So let's find out who this Word actually is, all right? Is it the Word of God itself, or is it speaking about someone, right, who calls himself the Word of God, right? So now open up to the book of Revelation real quick. Hold, hold St. John, and let's get uh, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13. Read it when you get it. We're going to get there. Revelation 19 and 13. Go ahead. And he, and he was cloth with the vesture thick in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Mm-hmm. So now it says, uh, when you read up, of course, remember this is talking about uh, Jesus Christ, all right, or Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So he says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, right? So again, this is just one of the titles in which Christ uh, was called by, so he was known as the Word of God, all right? And as you read throughout the Gospels, you'll begin to see why this name was um, was given to him, okay? Because remember, you know, Christ was literally the Word, all right? So now, um, so now let's go back to St. John chapter 1, and, and, and let's, let's, read, uh, verse, let's read verse 1. All right, and I explain it to you in, in, in text, which we uh, which we which we just read. Go ahead, John one and one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm-hmm. So now, let's break that down a little bit. So now, when he said in the beginning was the Word, right? So now we just read that Christ was at the actual Word. Remember, his garment was uh, dipped in blood, right, and his name was called the Word of God, okay, so you read up in that chapter of Revelation, it shows you that's dealing with uh, Jesus Christ, all right, so now, as he says, so, so let's read it with that name, all right, so now, in the beginning was Yahweh Shai, and the Word, excuse me, and Yahweh Shai was with God, right, and Yahweh Shai was God, all right, or he was with the Most High, and he was a power, Okay, um, in heaven. All right. So now, read verse two. Verse two. The same was in the beginning with God. Right. So he said the same was the beginning with God. So John. So John sits here and he reveals to us that Christ was already there in the beginning of creation. 
All right. So now um, the other scripture that you we, we can use to actually prove that. All right. So like you said, man, uh, in the beginning was Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai was with the Most High, and uh, Yahweh Shai was a power in heaven. Okay. So now he said, and the same was in the beginning with the Most High. Right now, read verse three. This is very important. Verse three is very important. Go ahead. John one and three. All things were made by him. Wait a minute. He said all things were made by him. Go ahead. And without him was not anything that made that was made. Well, wait a minute. He said all things were made by him. So now Christ was in the beginning, right? So as we read in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 1, we've seen that what? That in the beginning, the powers created the heavens and the earth, right? So we just read here in John that Christ was also a power with the Most High in the heavens, okay? He was not on, on an equal level with the Most High, but guess what? He was there, all right? He was there next to the Most High creating what we see to today, all right? So now he says um, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made, right? So read that one more time, Mark, please. Verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Mm -hmm. So now he said, and without him was not anything made that was made, right? So then that goes into, into into some more stuff, man, talking about how Christ is wisdom, um, all of that, okay? So, you know, the Most High Man created created Christ, all right, to do what? To assist him and to teach him, you know what I'm saying, how to bear rule and govern over all of his creation, which he's going to give Christ, right, which he is, Christ is, uh, this, all of this is Christ, basically Christ is inheritance, all right? So now go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, and uh, read, verse, read verse 2. Hebrews, chapter 1, and read verse 2. So this will confirm all of what. Uh, what I was saying, man, about Christ being the heir. All right, so go ahead and read that. Hold on, hold on. Your, your phone is on. It's, it's muted. Your line is muted. Can't hear you. Run it back. Go ahead. Hebrews 1 and 2. Uh -huh. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Whom he that appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Uh, so remember, Christ made the world, all right? So now he says, in these last days, spoken unto us uh, by his son, right? Who was, who was the son of the Most High? Yeah, I was shy is the son of the Most High, right? He says, whom has he appointed heir of all things, right? So now Christ is now the heir of every of all creation of what we, of what we see. Okay, why? Because that was being given unto him. And it says, it says uh, now, um, by whom also he made the world. All right. So now it says that Christ was also responsible for making the worlds in which we see today. All right. Even your own, even your own personal world. Right. All these, all this stuff, man, was created. All right. So now let's find out who, who was. Uh, who was Christ created by, right? So as we see, you know, we know that it is the most high, right? But now what proof do we have that Christ was actually created by the Lord, all right? Well, let's open up to the book of Proverbs. Let's get, um, you know, uh, the account of which Solomon gives, all right, of the creation of Christ. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8. And... You can start at start at verse twenty two. Proverbs eight and twenty two. Right. The Lord possessed me in the beginning. 
Mm-hmm. So now it said the Lord possessed me in the beginning, right? Go ahead. Of his way. Before his work of old. I'm sorry. I'm read, it, read it up on the top again. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Right. So now, as you can see, he said the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Right. So you look up the word possess in the Hebrew. It's going to show you that it's talking about how he created him. All right. So when he said, uh, so he said the Lord created me in the beginning of his way. Right. Before his works of old. So before he even began to construct anything, he made Christ. All right. He made the Messiah. Okay, he made his son. All right, go ahead. So real quick, uh, go to go to Colossians chapter one and verse fifteen. Colossians one and fifteen. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace. Mm-hmm. To, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. No, 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 no. I said Colossians, right? Chapter 1, verse 15. Colossians 1, 15. Excuse me. Colossians 1, 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Uh, go ahead. For so by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Mm-hmm. So now, as he says here, he says, who is in the image of the invisible uh, the invisible power, right, which is the most high, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created, right? So, of course, we know that this is talking about Christ, all right? So now uh, Christ was created by the Most High, right? And this is what we're reading in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, and verse, uh, read verse 22. All right, so go back to Proverbs now. So all things were created by Christ, <clears throat> and Christ was created, man, so that he might receive the dominion over all of, all of life and existence as we know it, all right? Go ahead. Verse 23. Proverbs 8 and 23. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. Right. So he said, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. Right. So he so Christ is saying, uh, so Solomon is showing you here that Christ was set up, man, to be ruler before the earth or anything ever existed. Right, so he's showing you that yes, he was already set there to be the absolute power, the the the, the, the um the king of the king of all of, of creation itself. All right, in this matter. Okay, so now let's show, let's show another account. Let's go to the book of, of Saint John, chapter eight and verse fifty-eight. Let's hear out of Christ's own mouth that he shows, man, that he was, you know, in the beginning. Uh, Saint John, chapter eight and give me verse fifty-eight. John 8 and 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Right, so Christ said, man, before Abraham was, I am. So he showed you, man, like, yes, I was there before Abraham. Who do you think Abraham was giving tithes to? Who do you think Melchizedek was, right? He was the high priest before there was even a high priest, before the sons of Aaron were even appointed or ordained to be the high priest of the nation of Israel, right? So it's showing you right there, man, that Christ was already Christ was already in the beginning, right? So now as we can see from the book of Genesis, chapter one, Christ was already there. Right, and he had his hand in all of the works of the Lord. Six days, everything, everything that you read about from the creation of man, Adam, the breath of life was being breathed into Adam. All of that, when Adam was uh, being taught, all of that, or, or given the commandment, Christ was right there next to the Most High, man, uh, 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 just pretty much bearing witness to everything, 
all right? So that's why Christ said here, man, he told the people, like, look, man, before Abraham was, before the patriarch, what you called in high regard was, I, I, I was, I am. I've already been here. That's why Christ said, he said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. He said, I'm the beginning and the end, right? So Christ, I mean, come on now. He said, I am the beginning and the end. So he shows you that he was there in the beginning and he's going to be here when it all ends, all right? So now, um, read that one more time in St. John. John 8 and 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Mm-hmm. So he said, before Abraham was, I am. All right. Hit Ephesians chapter chapter 3 and verse 9 now. Ephesians what up? Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. This was another one I wanted to get uh, regarding the Christ created all things. Ephesians 3 and 9? Yes. Ephesians 3 and 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, mm-hmm. who, created, who created all things by your house. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So he created all things by your house, Mashiach, or Jesus Christ. All right. Let's go back to Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Let's pick it up to verse 23. So the Lord created Christ, all right? Um, and he said, so the Lord created me in the beginning of his way. And he says, before uh, his works of old, before he began to construct um, the universe itself, read on, verse 23. Proverbs 8 and 23? Yes. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning. Or ever the earth was. Mm-hmm. So he said, I was set up. So Christ was already set up, as I said uh, before earlier. Christ was set up to be ruler over all of the Lord's creation. Go ahead. Verse 24. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains, abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was brought forth, well, as yet he had not made the earth, nor did uh, Sorry, read, read, read verse 25 one more time. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Right, so he said, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. So, yeah, Christ is showing you, like, look, he was there, all right, before any of this even, uh, before anything was even made. All right, that's what we said before there was fountains of water abounding, before there was mountains, before there was hills. He's like, I was brought forth first. That's why we had red man in that, uh, in that Col- I mean, excuse me, in that Colossians chapter one, I believe, where it shows us that, you know, Christ was the firstborn of every creature. All right. Um, in existence. So we talking about before angels, magistrates was made, Christ was, was, was already here before any of those things were even constructed or even thought about. All right. Christ was. Go ahead. Verse 26. Well, as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the depth of the world. Uh Uh-huh. Go ahead. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. So he said when he prepared the heavens, right, he said I was there. So like we get, like I said, I keep going back to Genesis 1. Yes. When it said, in the beginning, God created. In the beginning, Elohim, or the powers, created the heaven and the earth, right? So, like he said, he said, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. Hold that real quick. I want to get this in uh, uh, St. John 17. It just came to my, came to my mind. St. John uh, chapter 17, and I want to start at verse 3. St. John. Seventeen and three, uh-huh. and this is life eternal, that they may not actually, know thee. Actually, read verse one. John seventeen and one. These words spake 
Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to the heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Uh-huh. Go ahead. So Christ said, glorify your son, Lord, as I have glorified you. Tell me, Father. Go ahead. Verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, mm-hmm. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Mm-hmm. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Christ whom thou hast sent. Right. So now, wait a minute. So you got a lot of my mates down there sitting there talking about, well, you know, uh, uh, the, the whole Christ is God thing and all of that stuff, right? So they, they, they basically are still stuck on that Christianity. But you see right here that Yahweh Shah himself is letting people know, like, look, you're the one true God, right? And he said, and he said, Yahweh Shammah, Yahweh thou hast sent. So, of course, we know that Christ came from, uh, came from the Father, right? So, remember, he was already prophesied to come upon the face of this earth, all right, during the time of, um, during the time of Adam, which we're gonna go into, all right? And guess what? He was to, uh, save the world of Israel, all right? So he was to die for our sins. So it was already appointed from the beginning, man, that he would give his life and sacrifice himself, right? Because the Heavenly Father sent him to to uh to uh, to perform this task, all right? To show man to show us how we can walk how we can still be perfect in the flesh, you see what I'm saying? And overcome all of the, the, the aspects of temptation, man, by just using the scriptures, fast, the meditation, prayer, all of that. How we can overcome all of those evil spirits, man, that are around us. So can't nobody say it's impossible. Can't nobody say it's not possible because, man, you have men who, uh, you know, uh, who before Christ came on this earth were still, were, were doing this, was doing the exact same thing that you see Christ was doing, right? But Christ was on a completely, he was on a completely different level than those men before him, like Abraham, Elijah, Elisha, all of them, all right? But read on. Read from the three to uh, verse three again. And this is life, eternal, that they may not know thee, the only true God, and Christ, who thou hast sent. Uh-huh, go ahead. Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Hmm, so he said, I have glorified thee on the earth. So it's showing you, man, he received his mission before he even entered into the flesh, right? So he says, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So what was the work that he was given, that he was given to do? To build up Israel again, to prepare, to repair the breach of the children of Israel. All right? Go ahead. Verse 5. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I have for the world was. Wait a minute. Read that one more time. Uh, read that one more time, man. Verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So Christ said, man, he's like, glorify me with yourself, Father. Because he understood, man, that the Most High had the power to raise him, to have the power to, to return him back to his former glory, right? Before the world was, Christ shows you that he was already there, you see? Now, you're looking at every, everybody else looking at that. They're like, well, damn, what is he talking about? He was he, he was already he was with the most high. What? Before anything was? Huh? This may confuse, this may have confused a lot of people, man, but Christ already understood. He was already with the Heavenly Father, man, before he came, before he came down here. So remember, even us, with our spirits, um, the spirits that's within us, right, we were already with the Most High at one point, you know, and then um, we were selected to come down here in the flesh and endure, right, all of the trials and temptations and things of that nature, right? So basically what this is showing you, man, is true. Once you once you leave that celestial realm, man, you come into the flesh. Remember that that tie that that bomb, man, was was cut. So that's why Christ is, is asking the, the heavenly Father, man, to restore me to his to restore him to his former glory. All right. <clears throat> so um, let's go back to uh, let's go back to um, uh, Proverbs. Proverbs, mate. Yeah, Proverbs. All right. So you can read the rest of that. You can read the rest of that chapter on your own. 
Oh, it, it's uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful chapter, man. So he breaks down how he was only for the nation of Israel. All right. So read that. Proverbs 8 and pick it up at verse 26 again. Proverbs 8 and 26. Well, as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part, the dust of the world. All right, go ahead. He prepared the heavens. I was there. All right, so Christ said when, when the Lord prepared the heaven, when the most high prepared these things, he was like, I was there. Go ahead. When he set a compass upon the face of the death. When he so established he said, the compass. Hold on, what's that? So he said, when he set a compass upon the face of the death, right, meaning a circle, man. Remember when the earth, the earth or the world was being formed itself, right? Christ said he was there. That's what he said. He come past up, uh, upon the face of the depths. Go ahead. So remember when it said the spirit of God was uh, was hovering and surfacing over the waters and all of that. So remember when those elements were being divided, Christ was already there, man. When the when uh, the the firmaments were being formed, that's what he's talking about. The firmaments, the circles of the uh, the earth, all of that was being formed, right? Christ said he was there too. Go ahead. Verse twenty eight. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Mm -hmm. So talk about how he created the, 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 uh, the waters, the oceans, how he when he created dry land, how the water didn't go past. You know what I'm saying? Like you see the beach, right? You see that the water only comes to a certain point, then goes right back out to sea. It doesn't come all the way on land. You know what I mean? That's what he talks about. How the, that, that's the command that the Lord has set forth, right? So remember, when you see like the tsunamis and hurricanes and all of that stuff, man, and then you see the water can go can, can go miles past the the, the point that um, you know the point um, in which uh, in which was set for it not to come forth upon land, right? All of that. That's uh, all of that. That's what the Most High set up, right? But these things were being created by his son, all right? So his son was there, all right? And he was, like, participating in all of this, okay? So remember, you know, the Most High doesn't have to do anything. That's why he has servants, man, to do his will and his bidding, right? It's like he has messengers. We don't talk to the Most High directly, right? But the Most High talks to us directly through the mouth of his prophets, okay? Same thing, all right? So now let's, uh, let's read on. Verse 30, then I was by him, as one brought up on him. Wait, read that one more time, brother. Proverbs 8 and 30, then I was by him, as one brought up with him. Wait a minute, he said, I was by him as one brought up with him, right? So just going to, just going to show you, like, look, everything in which the Most High... Um, which, which, which the most high no one understood. This is what he was teaching his son. This is what he was teaching his son. Just like any father would teach his son, man, everything that he knows, all right? This is the the wisdom and, and the, the, the knowledge, man, that was being fed into the mind of Yahweh Shai, right? Okay, go ahead. And I was daily his delight. Rejoicing. I'm sorry, so I said, I was daily his delight, right? Go ahead. Rejoicing always before him. Mm -hmm. All right. And he was rejoicing before the Most High always. All right. Just like when you read in the book of Revelations, you see the host of heaven that was always giving praise and glory unto the heavenly Father that sitteth on the throne. So that the Son was doing the same exact thing. All right. Because he was sitting there receiving all of this, this, this knowledge and understanding, man, from the Most High himself. But just imagine, man, you have a Father that has infinite wisdom, and he's sitting here teaching you everything that he knows, man. Showing you, showing you how everything is done. All right, we can we can't even fathom that type of the understanding, man, in which you know Christ was given and the things that he knew. That's why he told us. That's why he was telling the people, man. He was like, look, you know, you sit there, you see Solomon, right? Solomon was one of the wisest men, but yet he, it's one who is he's the one that the Messiah, right? Who's wiser than, than Solomon himself, just to paraphrase. All right, so Christ was saying, like, look. You had Solomon. Solomon was one of the richest and one of the wisest men in history. But now one that's even wiser than him is here before you and you reject him. You know? So Christ already let him know, man. Like, look, his wisdom surpassed Solomon's. 
All right. But read on. Verse 31. Proverbs 8 and 31. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delight was with the sons of men. Wait a minute. He said, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, right? And my delights were with the sons of men. All right. So that right there, we gonna say we gonna say for another lesson. Was pretty much just showing you know what I'm saying. How you know we shot delight at being amongst the presence of of us, right? So go ahead. Verse thirty two. Now therefore hearken unto me, ye old children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Absolutely, right? So remember, you know, um, what, what does it say in the book of John, uh, chapter 3, where it says, uh, you know, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Well, remember, you know, also, what did Christ say? If ye love me, keep my commandments, right? He that loveth me and keepeth my commandments also be loved of the Father. That's the same John chapter 14, I believe. So, of course, he's showing you the same thing, man. Um, read on. 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Right, so now that's why it says, he that believeth, right, shall have eternal life. But he that believeth not has already is already condemned. Okay, so remember, um, he says, but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. You sin against Christ, who is wisdom, he's giving you the wisdom and understanding, man, is to keep his commandments. You sin against him, that's what? He was like, you wronging your own soul, man, by rejecting me. He says, and all they that hate me love death. So again, you hate Christ, you must love death. You don't believe you don't believe in Christ, that means you love death. You see? That's why you always see something there's always something off about one who does not believe in Christ, all right? There's always something that you're gonna be like, damn man, something's not right about that person, man. You know, always, all right, you'll be able to see. That's why Christ said, Man, you should you shall know a man by the fruit that he bears, right, or the tree by the fruit that it bears, right, referring to men anyway, okay? So, um, of course, now let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Let's go to the beginning. Genesis chapter 3 and read verse uh, 15. So Christ was prophesied to come um, come onto the earth, okay? Let's read this. Genesis 3 and 15. Go ahead. And I will put in me between thee and the woman. Right, so he said, so the Most High said, I will put hatred between thee and the woman. Okay, go ahead. And between thy seed and her seed. Uh-huh, so go ahead. And it shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his head. Right. So now, what is being said here when he talks about, so remember, there were judgments that were being uh, placed upon not only Adam, but also Eve and then also the serpent, right? So remember, the serpent was going to be the lowest form of life, the scum of the earth. Any man who had this mindset or this mentality, man, he was going to be the one that was going to be on the, on, on the surface of his belly, right? The lowest form of life, if you had that mentality, right? Um, so then he says, and I will put hatred between thee and the woman, so this is what uh, the Most High is, is explaining to the serpent, right? So remember, Christ is witnessing all of this, right? He's there. He's right there, even when this is happening, right? So then he says, um, and between thy seed, right, the wicked, okay, which come from the serpent, and he says, and her seed, all right, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, okay? So now, remember, that is the prophecy that was going to occur when it, um, um, down the line when it talks about the second coming of Christ, man, how he's going to destroy all of those who commit evil, okay? 
how he's going to destroy the works of Satan, how he's going to come back and avenge the chosen children of the Lord. All of it basically it ties, into the, it ties into the scripture, all right? So the battle versus the righteous and the wicked, right? But then it's showing you something else. It's talking about how Christ is going to be the one to come and subdue all the, all the wickedness and destroy it and everything, all right? Um, real quick, let's go to the book of Romans, uh, Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, and get there. Let me get it real quick for so, y'all. Uh, 16 and um, hold on one second, real quick. Uh, 16 and let's try, let's try 20. I think that's what I want. Read verse 20. Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Mm, so now we said, for the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. All right. Go ahead. The grace of our Lord, the Hashem, the Mashiach, be with you. Mm -hmm. So Amen. we already, all right. So we already know who's the God of peace, right? Or the power of peace, which is speaking about is talking about Christ Himself. All right. Um, so of course, as He's explaining here, right? So this is prophecy that goes back to the book, book of Genesis, right? So He says, "The God of peace shall bruise Satan." under your feet shortly all right so remember that's why you said that christ is going to come subdue you know the uh subdue satan and his workers man shortly all right so remember we're in that we're in that time man where it's coming to where christ is going to return man and destroy the workers of iniquity man and, and put them up under our feet all right subdue them okay so now um let's go back to genesis and read that one more time So, of course, Genesis. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Genesis 3 and 15. And I will put in many between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, uh -huh. and shall bruise thy head. Right. And thou shalt bruise his head. Okay. So now we said thou shalt bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. Uh, thou shalt bruise his head, man. So the stomping, the stomping that Christ is gonna put on, <laughs> gonna put on Satan, man, it's gonna bruise his heel, man. That's how bad it's gonna be. All right. So now let's open up to the, let's go to the book of Matthew's now, chapter uh, one and verse twenty-one. All right. Let's see what the purpose of Christ was, man. So now he's he manifesting himself in in the flesh, right? To do uh, to do what? Let's read that Matthew chapter one and verse 20, 21. Matthew one and twenty-one. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh, for he shall save his people from their sin. Mm -hmm. So now Christ's mission was to save his people from their sins. So the, the purpose of of of, of uh, Christ uh, coming on the face of this earth was to do what? It was to save his people, right? So that's why when we read in Saint John seventeen, right through to, uh, one through uh, I believe five. When Christ was talking about man, you know, I've completed the task of what you sent me to do, you know. All right, now it's time. All right, it's time for me to come home now, all right. And that's what Christ was preparing himself for, man, to, to exit this world, all right. So, um, of course, so now this was uh, the coming of the Messiah Christ, man, through the line and leaning to the house of David. So, remember, Mary was of the house of, was of, the house of David, so she was one of the daughters of Nathan, right. Nathan was her ancestor, all right, um, who was one of the sons of David. And then you had uh, Joseph, right, who was one of the uh, – who was a, was a direct descendant of Solomon, all right, who was the son of David, okay. So that's why when you read the book of Matthew chapter 1, 
it gives you the rundown of Christ's genealogy, all right? So this is the, the, these are all the male progenitors of Joseph's direct lineage, okay? And all the way to down to Christ, all right? So now when you look at Luke chapter 3 and 34, all, right, all the way to like 38, I believe, it's going to show you Mary's genealogy, right? Going all the way from um, from uh, from Adam all the way to to uh, David to Nathan all the way down to her father uh, he, Heli. All right. So now uh, open up. Now let's uh, go to uh, Matthew sixteen now. Okay, Matthew sixteen and verse thirteen. And read that. Matthew sixteen and thirteen. When Yahavashai came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Right. So he's like, now he's asking his disciples, well, you know, I know y'all been hearing the word, you know, who do y'all, you know, who do, who do men think that I am? You know, the son of man. Who, who do they think I am? Right? Let's read on. Verse 14, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one mm-hmm. of the prophets. Right, so now, he's like, some say that thou art John the Baptist. So remember, John the Baptist had been killed, right? So they think that he's the, the reincarnation of John the Baptist himself, right? What was John the Baptist's purpose? John the Baptist's purpose was to do what? To prepare the way for the Messiah, right? Okay, so then so he says, so say uh, Elias, right? <clears throat> so Elias was, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Elias was uh, 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 Elijah. Okay, so remember, Elijah was one of the famous prophets, man, that you read about in the Book of Kings. All right, that was able to had abilities, man, that the Most High had gave him in order to do many great things for the um, for the children of Israel, right? And then said, and then he says, and others say uh, Jeremiah or uh, Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. So that's who they was. That's what the buzz was going on. All right. So that's what everybody was saying, man. So this is the stuff that the disciples was hearing, right from you know from the people, right. So this is why Christ asks, right. Let's read on. And he said unto them, But who say ye that I am? Right, so now he said, and he said that to them, but who say ye? So who do you think I am? So that's what he's asking his disciple, right? Who do you who do you think I am, right? And let's see what uh, 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 one of the disciples said. Go ahead. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the son of the living power. Mm-hmm. So he said, so it's now Simon, all right, Peter, okay, um, he said, he answered and said, thou art the Christ. You, you're the, the, the anointed one. You're the Messiah. You know, you're the chosen one, right? So he says, uh, the son of the living God. So, of course, as you see, man, that they understood, you know, the prophecy of the scriptures. And this is why they were able to know that this man was no fraud. This is why they were able to follow the Messiah with no problem, all right? So you even see before that some of the disciples, man, they were following they were following John's teachings at first, right? But then, um, you know, they're like, hey, man, hey, you know what? We found the Messiah. You know, he's over there. Let's go. You know what I mean? He, man, this is the this is this is it. This, it's him. You know, you will read about that in the book of Saint John. All right. So make sure you, make sure you start getting into your gospels too. Okay. So he says. Uh, so read on. Verse seventeen. And Yahawashai answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Mm-hmm. So now he's like, man, the Spirit has revealed, the Spirit revealed it, to you, revealed it to you, man, that, you know, I'm the, uh, that he's the Messiah. All right? That's what Christ is saying. Go ahead. Verse 18, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right. So now he said, and he said also unto thee, excuse me, and I say, I, I say also unto thee that thou art that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Right. So he's telling with you, Peter, I'm establish 
the foundation of my congregation, right? The rebuilding of the children of Israel is going gonna, is gonna to be upon your shoulders at this point. So that's why he said, man, yo, with you, when I go, I'm going to leave everything with you now, all right? So Peter was the actual successor man of the church once Yahweh Shai had left, all right? <clears throat> so um, let's... Uh, Let's get some prophecy so to understand, man, so to see some of the things that, you know, uh, that the apostles were reading about in the ancient scrolls, you know, about the Messiah. Let's hit Isaiah now. Let's look at Isaiah chapter, um, chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, and then also then I want Hosea uh, chapter 11 and verse 1. Isaiah 11 and 1? Yes. Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Mm-hmm. So now, check this out. So now, this is what I, this is what Isaiah is prophesying about, right? So he said, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, right? So this is talking about how, uh, you know, Christ was going to be uh, one of the descendants of the son of Jesse, right, which Jesse was the father of King David himself, all right? So he was going to come from that lineage directly. Then when he says, um, uh, and a branch shall grow out from his roots, all right? So it's talking about how he's going to be a part of that, how uh, the Messiah is going to be a part of his lineage. So the Messiah is going to come forth from the line of David, all right, and he's going to descend from those lines of kings, all right, of, of Israel, all right. So after David, the U.S. Solomon, so that's a direct line all the way down, all right, almost over a thousand years worth of, uh, worth of descendants, all right, in which Christ descends from, okay. So that's what he means. So we're talking about a rod that's talking about the authority, all right. <clears throat> so um, so let, now let's get uh, Hosea 11 and 1, all right. So now through prophecy, this is how, um, you know, we understand that, you know, your house shy, the Christ, uh, would, uh, would basically have, you know, the characteristics to look for, all right? So, so this is how the disciples were able to know and understand, you know what I'm saying, or the people were able to know and understand, you know, who the Messiah actually was. So he was going to come from them, he was going to come, he was definitely going to come on the line of, the, on the line of Judah, He's going to be a descendant of David, so that means he's going to have kingship, all right? He, and he was going to be, um, he was definitely going to be, uh, 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 come from come from that line and come from that lineage, right? And there are other prophecies that, that we'll read about, right? So remember talking about, you know, Christ being born of a virgin, meaning a young woman, all of that stuff, man. So let's read that in Hosea 11 and 1. Hosea 11 and 1. Go ahead. When Israel, when Israel was a child. Then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So now he says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son uh, out of Egypt. Well, let's see, did that prophecy actually come to pass? Absolutely. So when you read in the book of of Matthew's chapter, of Matthew's chapter 2, it gives you that account, you know, of, of what? Joseph and Mary fleeing into what we know as Egypt, right? So, of course, they went to Alexandria, Egypt, you know, because that's where many of our brothers and sisters were at at the same time as well, right? And that's where they had raised the child Christ until, you know, Herod and the men that saw his life, they actually died, okay? So they understand. So, you know, that's uh, another part of prophecy that he will actually fulfill. And there's many others, you know, that you can actually, like, sit there and actually, like, read about, you know, um, dealing with the prophecies of Christ, all right? Um, you can get uh, Zechariah uh, Zachariah chapter 12, I believe, and I think it's verse 7. Let's go there real quick. Zechariah 12. Uh, Hold on one second. Let me, let, me, let me get that real quick. Let me make sure. Yes, 12 and 7. Zechariah, 12 and 7. 
the Lord also shall save the tent of Judah first. Right, so he said the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Why was he going to save the tents of Judah first? Because remember, the Jews were the ones who were sitting there waiting on the prophecy of the Messiah to come, right? All right, so now remember with the northern kingdom, it wasn't even on their mind at that time. All right, remember, a lot of our brothers and sisters from the northern kingdom had went off into idolatry, and they were scattered, okay, kicked up out of their own land, all right, scattered throughout the nations, all right. So remember, there was still a remnant of Judah that was left, okay. Go ahead that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the house and inhabitant of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend his inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at the day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God. Uh, what I was that, saying, I just needed verse 7. All right. So okay. I got to something else. So, uh, so of course, so those are some of the prophecies, man, um, in which you know the you know um, in which we'll read about with the Messiah, right? There are many others, you know. So we just, we're going we're to get those. So, uh, of course, the purpose of the Messiah was to do what? To rebuild um, the 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 order and structure of the nation of Israel, all right, which we would call the church, all right, to prepare the church, and then also um, to uh, um, be the, the, the savior of our nation, all right, and to give Israel a chance um, at repentance and grace, okay? So remember, Acts, read Acts chapter 5 and verse, uh, and verse 29. Start at verse 29. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to be obey God rather than men. Mm -hmm. So he said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Go ahead. Verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hung on the tree. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 31. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be the prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Right. So now that's what Christ's mission was. To, what, what Christ's mission was, right? To give uh, repentance uh, unto the nation of Israel. All right. To die for the sins of our nation. Okay. So um, you know that's just a little bit. There's more. So you can mark this as part one. Uh, you know, to this lesson. You know, dealing with the origin of Christ. Just some of the prophecies that we went into. <clears throat> to give a little understanding, man, we'll really go into his purpose, probably in part two, so that everybody understand, man, that Christ was actually rebuilding um, uh, the nation of Israel once again, right? So, again, uh, the sacrifice in which he made, he sacrificed himself so that all Israel would now be grafted back in together, right? We're not talking about grafting in other nations, but we're talking about all of the children of Israel that was lost, right, that were scattered throughout the nations. Now they have the chance wherever they're at wherever they receive the message, to repent, establish themselves, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and get back on track with the most high, all right? So just like we're doing here now, you know, here in America, right, you got brothers and sisters that are in Africa doing the exact same thing that we're doing, man, going through the exact same oppression and affliction, you know what I'm saying, that we're going through, right, over here, all right? So then you got them in Australia, you got them in uh, New Zealand, you got them, uh, brothers and sisters in Europe, of uh, Iceland, wherever, you know what I mean, wherever the most, the word of the most high went, of course, that's, um, that, that was, uh, the purpose of us being able to receive, you know, um, our second chance, man. So, of course, you know, you're dealing with Catholicism and the Spanish conquistadors, whatever, you know, a lot of that stuff, man, um, was just the spreading of the word of the most high anyway, but they was doing it for their own wicked, wicked and evil means, but nonetheless, this is how we were able to receive it, all right? So they began to spread it. Of course, the apostles were doing it, you know, even before the heathen had got their hands on the scriptures and began to pervert the scriptures or whatever. So, you know, like, uh, man, it's, 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 it's kind of deep, man, the way the, you know, the way the, uh, the gospel, the way the gospel spread, man, throughout the face of the earth, and it was only lost to its, to its children, to the rightful owners of the word, right? You know, the Israelites, how we wasn't able to, you know, how we had 
uh, lofty opportunity and the understanding of it, right? And then the Lord gave us, you know, gave us the understanding once again, and that's why we're here today, all right? But uh, that's another topic of discussion for another time. Um, but, of course, man, so just to get like a brief synopsis, man, of what we done went over. So remember in John uh, chapter 1, you know, uh, verse 1, um, we see that Christ was long manifested, um, you know, before the, 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 the gospel or the New Testament, man. Christ was like the first creation of the Lord, Yahweh, you know, before the angels of heaven, before the earth was ever formed, all right? That's very important for us to understand, and you'll, understand, you'll basically see why Christ plays such a crucial role in the deliverance of our nation, right? So, you know, remember it said that he delighted with, um, he delighted um, in the sons of men, you see? So, of course, Christ had to have that, that, that strong love and desire, man, for us, you know, in order for him to, to make the sacrifice, man, that he, you know, he, uh, that he made, you know what I mean? That's like me, I'm like... I'm just not going to die for any and everybody, you know, my family, yeah, you know, but Christ, he, he said he, he did it. He died for everybody. I'm talking about he died for that, the, 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 the brother that's the pedophile over there, the, the sister that's the prostitute over there, the public and the sinners, you know, the, the rappers and entertainers that sold, they sold, you know, to the devil. If they were paying, get their mind right, then they have a chance at life too, you know. So that's why they have the opportunity now to get themselves right. That's why Christ said, man, I delight it in the sons of men, all right? That's what we read in Proverbs, right? So that's why he definitely he made his, his, his sacrifice for us, all right? So, you know, he seen the, the glory, the beauty. He was there. He met, he talked to Abraham, all of that. Who do you think, the, who do you think that angel was, you know, um, that that Abraham had told his family, like, look, go get that, go get some bread, baby. You better roll that dough, cook it, you know, get that kid and that goat. So, you know, come on, let's get all this together. So, you know, they went and prepared the, the they went and prepared the, you know, the dinner and stuff, man, so that this man could eat, you know. And there was two others with him. But he said, my Lord. So I'm like, Lord, what you mean? Oh, that's Christ. Christ was the one that was there. You know, Christ was conversing with Abraham, you know. So remember that stuff, man. He was already here. That's why he said, before Abraham was, I am, you know. And he was just manifested. You know, he just came here on earth and was manifested in the flesh, right? He had to learn just like us, you know. He had to be taught just like us from his parents. He kept the, the, the Passover, you know, all of the feasts, Pentecost, you know what I mean? All of those things, man, that's what Christ was doing, you know, even um, here in, you know, in the flesh, all right? So, um, of course, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, we've seen that, uh, when it says God, remember that's plural, that means the Elohim or Allah Hayyam, you know, talking about powers, all right? So never get caught up on the word God, all right, when you see it. So just understand what the Lord says. He says, I am the Lord God or the Lord your God. I mean, he's saying, I am Yahweh, your power, okay? So, um, of course, you know, make sure you, you, uh, you take note of this one. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, when he said, and, and, uh, and God said, let us make man. So he's like, no, it's the God that said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, right? So this is the most high Christ conversing with one another saying, you know what? Well, let's make man in our image, Father. He's like, okay. You know, so man was created, you know what I'm saying, in, in, uh, in the image of the most high, which remember, which is wisdom. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, man, being the superior beings on the face of this earth. So remember, you see all of these, they're, they're all type of creatures on this earth, right? But, you know, you see that, you don't see, you, you see us, man, you know what I mean? We're the intelligent form, we're the most intelligent form of life on the face of this earth, right? <clears throat> so, um, you know, uh, so it says, uh, so, yeah, so man was created as a superior being. That's why we're called gods, right? So uh, by us being gods, so don't get tripped up, man. When you somebody calls you God, like, yo, you're cool. What's up, God? What's up, God? You good, God? You know what I'm saying? You good power, you know, because I know that brother, he's a power. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, even going into one of the laws when he says, 